goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. They're good in the fucking right. Episode 33, the Jesus episode. Good in fuckery, y'all. Yeah, man. We did this the pimping episode, but we ain't nosy. <laughs> nah. Three. All right. Nah. So I'm gonna start off with a little bit more black excellence or whatever. So y'all, y'all heard about LeVar Burton um succeeding Alex Trebek and Jeopardy as the host? Come on, reading Rainbow? Kunti yeah, Kinte. Data. Yeah. Kunti Kente. Oh, He's going to be the new host of Jeopardy. A reading Rainbow. <laughs> I can't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. That's my funny you know, shit, yo. Reading Rainbow. You know what I, I, Damn, you know what I always thought it was funny about yeah. reading Rainbow? What's up? It's because after a while, I thought they were gonna have like some new books. They start, <laughs> they start having reruns. <laughs> I was like, wait this, a minute, you might have missed it the first time. Catch this good book, man. <laughs> Read Rainbow, the, the uh, show that put me up on IBO. Yo, I've been I've been learning about the Whipping Boy for the second week in a row. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, you are gonna catch all of this Whipping Boy action. Oh, make man. sure you comprehend the story. Pause, pause. That sounded crazy. Beg my pardon. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh man. All right. Um, you enjoy this, uh, Tiz, pretty much. Starring your favorite rapper. Um, he produced the the Western. Jigga? Yeah. Jay Z. He's producing movies. The harder they fall. Um. That it's a Western movie oh, on Netflix. Be, uh, yeah. I've seen Yo, that trailer for that. Yo, it got that's Regina King, good. it got Edges Alba, everybody. it got Lakeith. Got I'm gonna everybody. tell you what, you sold me with Regina King, man. I'll watch anything she in and give it a try. She's amazing. And I think she like one of the main characters in that joke. Mm-hmm. I've been fucking with her since 227. Yo, she is it's gonna movie. be a good movie. Yep, yep, man. And she is you hilarious. Know, it's like Riley movie. Freeman. She is. She is hilarious as Riley Freeman. And he yes. <laughs> yep. So that's um uh, that's one of them. Um black comic book excellence, right? Okay. Um okay. Okay. and um in X-Men, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been telling mm-hmm. you this whole house of X thing. They they made their own nation and stuff like that. In the story, they're making a lot of straight up political moves. I was like, so like every time I read it, I'm like, "Yo, if black people just figure out to do exactly what the, the X Men is doing in this book, we'd be good." <laughs> what? <laughs> good. So no, black people follow the X Men's playbook. They got this uh, in the X Men now. They got this concept called mutant technology, where they combine their powers together to to create something. So mm-hmm. all of the most powerful mutants went to Mars and basically terraform mars and took over mars as a mutant huh. planet so they and then with like uh they they got a a basically a gov- government ran company that's possibly it's like the shield of the solar system so they're treating mars as the capital of the solar system so anybody that's going in our solar system has to go through mars or whatever they got like the strongest mutants there so being that's the capital of Mar- of the solar system now, Mars, and it's a mutant planet now, they have to have a head of the capital, which would be the regent of the solar system, region of soul. So who did they pick? It was a great scene because Dr. Doom came in and, and was like, all right, so who do I have to speak to? If I'm talking to the leader of the whole solar system, who is this king? Who is this person? And then you hear that, then basically they describe it as a woman speaking. And the next thing you know, Storm comes out of nowhere and says, I'm the region of soul. I'm the, she's basically the queen of the freaking solar system. Damn right. right. So I, I like, like that. Yeah. Fuck the right yeah, storm. Like Let's that. go, queens. I like that. 
I like so that. So that means if the Cree come through, they got to talk to Storm. If if the scrolls did, come through, they got to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Did you say if the Cree come through? What? The Cree, the Cree Empire. The oh, Kree nigga, aliens. I was going to say, what the fuck are you talking about over here, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm not talking about aliens. So, all, all, all those alien empires, they got to they gotta talk to Storm first or whatever. Damn right. Ooh, so, Where is yeah. your man at? <laughs> Like Cree, some on a different world. Oh yeah, I yeah Cree, Cree, the blue guys, the extra yeah. strong blue guys, pretty much. That's it, pretty much. So yeah, oh, yeah I know who you talking about. So, but it remind so, me, of, it always make me think of Cree, some on a different world. Who is mm-hmm. also an excellent vocal uh, voice actor, along with Regina Red. King. Who does she act? Who is she? Um, Cree Summers, I think, I believe she was like Susie on, um, on, on Rugrats. On Rugrats. Let me, let me look up her. Yeah, she did a lot of voice. You right. Uh, you we, you told me that one time on this show. You absolutely right. Uh, she did a lot of yep. shit. Y'all definitely she, said that before. Yeah, she did like, uh, wait, there's a whole list of them. <laughs> she's like Vixen in one of the cartoons. She played She Hulk in one of them. She was Storm one time in another cartoon. She was Vixen. L- Who is Vixen? Vixen is a black DC character. She can uh, a black Beastly character. DC comic character. DC. Oh, I was like what kind of shit is she called? <laughs> no, no, no. She. No, I'm talking about that. <laughs> and um, you know um. Tiny Toon Adventures. She was El, um, Elmira. Yeah. She was Elmira. Oh, yeah. I now hear that yeah. voice. You got me. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I can hear yeah. it now. Like as soon as you said, "Yep, I got it." Yep, that is definitely Freddie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. All right. So, Freddy, yep. bro. Yeah. Uh, so where I was at? Oh yeah. Uh, so Black Comic Book History. Uh, Storm. A black woman is the leader of the solar system in comic books and Marvel comics. All right. So Go from one black storm. Woman. Yep. So from one storm to another, it's time for the BET Awards edition <laughs> of Good and Fuckery, y'all. Nigga, I thought you was about to say it's time for the percolator. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, if y'all like that song, uh that uh that song that the city girls changed the percolator into. Yo, I thought you was about to say it. it's time for the percolator. I'm about to be like, what, nigga? What is happening on this show? <laughs> if, if, that would be a down. perfect time. That'd be a perfect time for the city girls to come in and do their talk. Oh about. man, they 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 did they done redid the percolator. Yep, they said it's time for the what percolator. What do they know about the percolator? That's like some uh, Maryland, DC. Area mm-hmm. that's DMV type shit right there. That's mm. that's up our way. Music is music is music. They found it and they got to it. And you know, majority of us producers <laughs> are from Virginia anyway. So I don't know who that's was the, the producer of that song, but yeah, they changed it and said they hey, so the exact words, these these is out here getting paper. It's time for the twerkalator. That's and that the twerkalator. Yep, that's the name of the song. Oh, Twerk man, you don't get the hell out here with that. <laughs> they so the the with it, huh? Hey man, let me stop. Let me stop. The but girls like, like it. man, I don't mean no harm. I'm tired of them taking all nah, shit. I'm I'm getting to be like that old man at the club now, man. Like the, I'm the old man that's mad about everything. Stop mm-hmm. playing my shit. Leave my shit alone. Yeah. But um. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> everything don't need a remix. The one perform one performance I did like, uh, Tyler the Creator did the, uh, his new Lumberjack song, and uh, the way he did it was cool because uh, he was actually one of the part of the, one of the lyrics is like "Black boy coming out of Royce, Rolls Royce," and he comes out to Rolls Royce, and the whole time is like he's in a He's in a storm or something. They got the wind blowing and everything or whatever. 
And then like he's like mm-hmm. flying back and performing at the same time. And the way he did it, it was like real smooth or whatever. So if y'all haven't seen that, the Tyler Creator performance of his song was pretty cool. Pretty on much. the GT Awards. Yeah, yeah. Um the DMX tribute with Method Man. I was like, Method Man really embodied DMX when he when he first came out. So that was a dope, uh, a dope tribute. I gotta start watching award shows again. I haven't missed all of. Oh, uh, you know, I don't really, I don't really dig. I what is it? I feel like all award um, award shows are like fake, especially when it comes to like when they get awards and stuff. It's like either pretty obvious, or if they didn't get it, then I I know it was like some politics behind it, especially with the Grammys or whatever. But if I do mm-hmm. watch it, it's like either performances or like a comedian says something funny, pretty much, or the host, pretty much. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't, uh, I ain't watched an award show in a good. <laughs> Whew, it's, it have... it's it's been a minute, man. It's been some years, <laughs> like literally. <laughs> I mean, the probably the real reason for that is probably the same reason I don't really look at them. It's because nobody I really care about is on that the award shows anymore. So, yeah, so like, awesome. I think the last award show I really got hyped yeah. about was the year when Chris Brown was jumping across people's head, and uh, I mm. think Pastor Cavassier was still out. It was like a long <laughs> okay, no, that was a minute. Yeah, yeah, was it was a minute. a minute. It was like it was like two thousand and three, but two thousand and two, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I but, think those I really watched in the whole award show. I've watched like clips from it, or I've seen people like I've been at people's house while the awards were on, but to sit there and watch it, I can't say I have. But I think uh, I think this year they they did good because with the performances, because one is this is the it was a whole year where we couldn't really have award shows in shows period because pandemic. So now yeah, that everybody else, like, from what you're talking about the title of the creative stuff, it sounds like people are actually performing again instead of just being on stage with all your niggas yelling. Yep. So, mm-hmm. um, Meg Thee Stallion yeah, right. won Best Female Artist, which is to be expected because she's having a hell of a run, pretty much. Yeah, she on fire. Mm-hmm. And uh, Queen Latifah received a Lifetime Achievement Award, and they did like a tribute with like Lil Kim, Moni Love, Rhapsody, and MC Light doing her hits, pretty much. Okay. Do you cool. know who won the um, the Best Male Award? Was it Dub Baby or Lil Baby? Nah, last time I think it happened. had to be a baby. <laughs> Probably is a baby. Yeah. Cause they run it every. Yeah. <laughs> Boss babies. Seen, yeah, the baby. But both of the both of them babies. If, if you want your shit to be a hit, put one of them on it. If you wanted to go really big, put both of them on it. Yeah, I think. Um, let's see, male artist. If Google will pay, it will freaking cooperate. <laughs> Oh, that's the winners and nominees. Little baby. I was gonna say I knew it was a baby. I knew it was one of them babies. <laughs> and he was going against the baby, Drake, J. Cole, Jack Harlow, and Pop Smoke. And I feel like they just really Jack Harlow. Smudged. Yeah, Jack Harlow. He's having a little run right now. It's a, a white, white dude. Rapper. No, I know who he is, but other than what's popping, <laughs> what other song he got out? Um, well, he seemed like he come out. Like I see on title that he come out with a new song. I mean, they all come out with a new song all the time, but I mean, I don't got time to be listening to everybody. I really haven't that dig too deep into him. Uh, pause yeah, heard as far as his pop- music. His shit don't. His shit don't get down to Atlanta. Oh, pause, 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 pause. What happened? No, what I said about what you said. <laughs> I'm what happened? You know, yeah. Digging into his yeah. music, or oh, whatever, and no, I said yeah. dig too no, deep, so I said pause. But I pause. instantly say pause. It was pause. Yeah. yeah. That nigga was like, I ain't really dig too deep pardon. into him yet. Pause. Yeah, that's from Ace I mean, the battle rapper. Beg your pardon? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, All right. Uh, but yeah. That nigga yeah. funny shape, 
All what? right. Um, what? Yeah. That's terrible. <laughs> Why are you saying that? <laughs> what? That's a clear observation. Shit. That's the same shit. <laughs> That's what I mean. All right. So, um, with all the good, <laughs> with all the good of the BET Awards, there is some fuckery. Some of them will just go past. Uh oh. Or whatever. Lil Nas X's performance. He's oh, a great oh. artist. I ain't looking at the performance. What did he did? Did he? Did he? Did he? What he did? He 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 done did something with the devil again. Nah, I ain't do some of the man. He kissed the yeah, man on stage. And I ain't oh, watched I ain't performance. Probably, uh, that's so I ain't got. That ain't I don't know. got no. I ain't I thought, much. About to tell me he did some crazy shit. That ain't no fucker. That's just him being gay. You know how. Right, cool. That's him being yeah, pretty much. So I ain't really watch it, but you know, hey, whatever. But I'm pretty sure that I think the fucker about it is that all right, we all already know now, and the media is trying to make it a like, like a spectacle. Yeah, I'm at the point like, now, man. Like people being gay is normal. Know. Like I, I don't yeah. understand why we make it the big see, like he kissed a man, he's gay. If a dude had to mm-hmm. kiss a woman, unless the woman was a celebrity, we wouldn't have gave a damn. So why we give a damn about this? Mm-hmm. Kiss who you want to kiss. Long as he, nah, he ain't kissing me. Yeah. We done all went to high school with people that it was gay who had gay in their nicknames. You see me? Yeah. So, this man, this little boy, young man, whatever you want to call him, kissing whoever he chooses to kiss has nothing to do with nobody. You can mm-hmm. turn the channel. I mean, with, uh, the same people who are in the uproar now, which are in the same uproar when Diana Ross flicked Lil' Kim Titty on stage, or when Madonna kissed them, this, you know, this, excuse me, kissed them other females in the mouth. Yes, no. they were, which is weird. Cause at this point, like people be doing that shit. Like, but I understood why I was weird back then. Cause at that point, in the media and even in just everyday society, that wasn't a normal thing where you would see people necessarily kissing another per- person of the other side. Like, it just wasn't as free and out as it is now. But for like the past ten years, we've seen this constantly. Like, this isn't like exactly. some new shit no more. So like. The fact that media exactly. is trying to make, make a spectacle out of it, I don't understand what the spectacle is. Like, okay, he gay. How is this the gay. spectacle? That makes sense. But, I don't get it. All right. But so. you have the you have the lo- you have the logo channel. You have it. What's the logo it, channel? It's, it's like not, the NBA channel? It's a is it, no. It's, it's like a gay channel. It's a LGBT. It's a gay and lesbian channel. 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 Well, damn! I didn't know that that was the thing. Yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, that's, the lo- that's, it's called a yeah. logo channel. And they got a gate. L O G. So why are we? So why are we conservative? They got a whole channel with this. Like, what? they've been had that channel too. Yeah, that, that channel been around for like years now, like fifteen exactly. years, some years. Right. I don't. I don't. I don't understand. Like the uproar is it because it's on the BET or is, is that is that the issue? But it, it can't be the issue because. It's been other sexual stuff on that on that same show. I mean, I don't have a problem with him doing nothing he do as long as he do that over there where he do that. You do what mm-hmm. you do over there, over there. You feel me? Like that's just what it is. Every person got the right to feel how they want to feel and do what they want to do in their own zone. As long as he's not trying to push, as long as he's not trying to push his beliefs off on nobody else, force nobody to do nothing against their own will. Like. That's yeah, it. like let yeah, let that little man be like shit. He just throwing it in y'all face <laughs> because he know y'all gonna say somebody. <laughs> y'all gonna get more records for him. He feel like y'all gonna, gonna go to his face. Y'all gonna, gonna do it. Like that's it. it. Give me some free promo. Do do yeah, doing for me the promo. But I gotta break my he, wife on the camera and kiss her and get some. He's trolling the trolls. Like he's he's being a genius right now. My record sales down. Watch me do this. I'm about to get we'll these shit out we'll real quick. Lap dance the mm-hmm. devil. This mm-hmm. Now I don't even think anybody really even listened to that song until it's like a performance or something because they know they want to see what he gonna do. Crazy. That's what they. What fuckery is afoot this time with Little Nas X? That's all he gave him. If that's all he gave him, <clears> I won't even newsworthy. 
the performance Mm-mm. was legendary or something like we can move on. I think they <laughs> kicked kissed the girl on the show, so shoot. <laughs> well, I mean, but, uh, I've seen shit like that on MTV on a regular everyday channel. So, I mean, mm-hmm. in the nineties, <laughs> this shit blows me, man. This is this shit. Whatever. Yeah. All right. And then uh, what nobody do. And uh, and I'll say the end of. Fuckery, uh, the good and fuckery off. Uh, the Migos had a dope performance, and Cardi B came out uh, with Child, or whatever. It's yes, just... is this Offsets, baby? <laughs> I, I would hope so. They're like still married I mean, together. I, oh, they are still together. Like I wasn't sure if they were. Okay. Together. I remember at one point. I they mean, had, they like, came out up or were married. Nah, they were not, were not together, and then they were. So I just wasn't even sure if they were, they were still an item or. Uh... They were displaying their disputes with each other, their their marriage disputes with each other on media. So you, they always look like they're breaking up. But, but they together, they know they're a power couple. So I'm pretty sure that's Offset's child. Pretty much. Okay. But speaking of children. Well, congratulations, <coughs> Party B and Offset. Oh, uh, definitely. Like a child. Hope it's a healthy child and God bless them, man. Salute. And congratulations on Amigos with that album because I actually like that album. And I I'm was one of them people thing. that slowly. Talking about this Culture get, 3? Yeah, it slowly got, in, got into um, it. I, well, I will I'll say put, this. I'm going to tell you what I did like. I haven't yeah. seen the BT Awards, but I did see their little performance with the. Yeah, yeah. I like, Straight I don't man. know what, I don't like Straight the song. Man. But I like that little the little dance. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what shit my old ass could do. Ain't gotta worry about my knees cracking or nothing. Just yeah, I can do that. Hey, yeah, straight in. All right. Yeah, I, I can do I'm, all that shit. I'm with it. All right. I think I, I, I think oh, yeah. I've grown to like them. I think oh, I've grown yeah. to like them because their personalities is funny to me. Like they all. Oh, I love like the Migos, they. but I had I yeah. did not like that last album, and I, mm. I'm I'm not yet into this one at all. But I like them as a group. I like them mm-hmm. as a person. Like I, I like them in general. I, I rock with them pretty. They, they are right with me. I just we, the music. We get it. I, I'm not. It's it's all for the past two albums. It sounded like the same song. They just changed the words, but the same. Uh, it won't. It ain't no new. Like I feel like on that first Culture album. You gave me a woke Kimosabe. Hey. Then you gave me the raindrops, drop tops. Like you gave me different little bops. You gave me different little vibes. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's been the (laughs) same vibe since then. Like once that album ended, I feel like they went into this new whatever this is and they just got stuck there. And it's like they comfortable because you know they the Migos, so people gonna rock with it because they the Migos. But hey. it might be, it might be um, they using the same producer because sometimes when you use the that same producer, they may be stuck in the get, sound, but it's definitely yeah, stuck and that's the one that you're most comfortable with or whatever, so that keeps you in that that same zone. Yeah, I don't like that. Or, or yeah. devil's advocate, devil's advocate. They become complacent, and they just need someone to challenge them, so they can come with something different. And that's more mm-hmm. where I'm lying at. That's what I think the line is. I, I think that they are they're the Migos. Like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, no matter what they put out, no matter what I say, like nobody gives a shit what Tia says. Like they're the fucking Migos, <laughs> so they can put out whatever they want to, and they know that at the end of the day. Tomorrow when they wake up, they gonna still be the Migos. People gonna still buy their shit, rock their shit, listen to their shit. They got a built-in fan base at this point. And I feel like mm-hmm. when people get built-in fan bases, one of two things happen. Either they want to keep expanding their fan base like a Drake does, where they keep on changing their sound, keep on rocking with new artists, new producers, and keep incorporating new things to keep them sounding fresh, or they get mm-hmm. stuck and they start get stuck in a sound. And it's okay to get stuck in the sound if you are cool with having just a run. But if you want to be there for like past like that five years of that run of whatever that sound is, 
the way music is changing now, the sound of music changes every few years. So if you're not on that wave or a part of that or some of that is not incorporated in your music, it's almost like you sound dated. And mm-hmm. that's what it sounds like. Like what they're doing mm-hmm. right now sounds like them five years ago. And that's for me as an artist in the 2020s, that's not necessarily good enough. Like in the 90s, there was a 10 year run where everybody rapped pretty much the same way. Like once Rock Kim and Big Daddy Kane kind of cool G rap, they kind of expanded the mm-hmm. way we rapped and <laughs> gave us new flows and shit. And then you had like Bone Thugs come in with a new harmony. You had a bunch of different flows. But everybody was like, like you could pick one of those things. Like you was either rapping fast like Twister and Bone Thugs and them, or you was rapping regular like Biggie and them. The only thing that might change is your cadence to meet the flow of the song. But like, it was still basically like the same type of thing. What happened in the mid early 2000s, like that 2005-ish range when T-Pain and all these people came in, music started shifting. But because of the because of the way like the internet kind of exploded at the same time, music started changing quickly. Because now, like so many, like we talked about, I think it was off air last episode. Like music changed so shifted so quickly because like you got all these different cultures to pick from there. At first, you was just sat, listening to what was in America in your area, and that was what you had, and that was your template. So a person from Atlanta kind of sounded like a person from Atlanta or the South. Mm-hmm. From the Midwest kind of sounded like a Midwest person. The East Coast person sounded like now music itself is changing so fast that hip hop is changing. So if you were still, if you're still rapping like you was in 2016, it sounds dated, even if it's a new beat and everything. It's just the same. Like you got to change up your whole style almost and like give me something new. Like the only person I've seen that raps the same way on everything that still is successful is J. Cole. He's the only one I've seen. Like, even Lil Wayne, he had his run, and he still raps the same right now. If you listen to Lil Wayne on the track, he still sounds sound the same type of shit he sells. Sounds the same, same overall style. But he's also not as popping as he used to be because he sounds kind of dated, even on new songs. Like, on that you can get a piece of nana. That John with uh mm-hmm. two chains. Mm-hmm. Two chains mm-hmm. sounds modern. Lil Wayne sounds like you took a verse from 2010 and 11, Lil Wayne, and just put it on this new track. <laughs> he still you feel probably me? feel like that that verse is still and fire. It's not, I'm not know. saying that it's not fire, but what mm-hmm. I'm saying is no, I'm just saying how you feel like that. And the and to a younger audience, like they own NBA Young Boy shit now. Like you, oh. like they don't, they don't left you Migos a little bit. So like Migos is in a weird place where I think they need to like start to reinvent themselves a little bit. And that doesn't mean change who they are as a group. It just means to update their style, incorporate some fresher flavors, maybe go out of the country and hang oh. out in somewhere else so you can get some different vibes in your arsenal and then hit the studio again and give me some new. That's all. Oh. But yeah, straightening ain't nothing but motorsport. Just you just change up the word. Same vibe, same mob, same. Well, see, see this, see this is the thing. <laughs> see, see this is the thing though, um, because I was one of the people like, I really didn't get into. I was I was still into just extra lyrical rap, pretty much in the beginning of all this stuff or whatever, because everything sounded the same. So to me, it seemed like all the club music. And everything from 2010 to now still sounds pretty much the same. It's a lot of songs now. It's almost give you that, it almost give me that Jamaican rhythm. So you know how they have in, you you go to like a reggae club and it's like the same beat, but it's like five different artists did their own version of the other, pretty much. I feel like it's the same yeah. thing. It's like the beat changed this time, but the everybody sounds exactly the same. And especially when the Migos came out, when me when Migos first came out, and they had that flow going or whatever, um, and it seemed like everybody was following suit. Even Drake 
following suit, but he's good for doing that anyway, pretty much. And then all of music started sounding all like the Migos to me or whatever. And is it was like a gradual process that now that I done gotten used to their voice so much around me in in my life or whatever, I got used to their sound. I mean, to be uh, just to be honest or, or whatever, because I know a lot of people will be like, man, I've been listening to Migos since blah, 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 blah. Nah, I gave them a hard time because that was the complete opposite of what I was listening to at the same, at that time, pretty much. And I think in that time period, I wasn't really big on going out to clubs. So it kind of distorted how I look at them. Um, but to me, it just all sounds like the same genre of music or whatever so and i don't know i, I feel I like think it the, changes every three to five years like i think even I, what I you think, said, like right now with that rhythm shit like <clears throat> that's the new afrobeat shit that started about yeah, three I, years I, ago when uh french montana and drake first started doing it and uh then you had that uh john with sway lee and them that was like afrobeats and it was like that was what kind of started and then you had wiz kid and all these people started coming in and that was a new flavor but before that mm. right before that you had the uh, um the turn up vibe the um mm-hmm. the, the high sense and the don't stop pop that don't oh everybody yeah. was doing them party like a rock star and the and all that and then before that you had the uh, um the more D- dj Khaled type anthem type songs with the i'm so good. <clears throat> like it's been vibes that have changed but and every vibe is yeah. like that but i think the artists that have been able to go along with each vibe and still stay themselves like <clears throat> kanye when he was first come out to 808s to even in that look when he was doing shit with DJ Khaled, I, mm-hmm. uh, I go hard or whatever. Like mm-hmm. even in them, even in the moments, he was still Kanye, but he was able to match the vibe the of vibe. now. Migos, to me, <clears throat> in their beat selection and their overall style, sound exactly like they were five years ago. Now, if you look at them five years before that, I don't think that. Like when they mm-hmm. first came out with Bando and all that into the Versace, into a culture one. I saw progression. Culture two, I wasn't really feeling it, but I feel like that whole, I didn't feel it because that whole album sounded the same to me. Yeah. To my ear. Hey, you, you're not the only people, I've heard people say the same thing about culture two, but like the key about it is the sound or whatever. Like with when I look at it, I look at it like when I listen, I'm listening more at how they rap on the beat than I'm listening to the beat sometimes or whatever. So when I was as far as how I'm going at it, as far as like I said, they all they they sound the same or whatever. I'm really just talking about how their flow is pretty much on the on the beat. I feel like they they still have that same style of flow or whatever. Yeah. The only I I I think, and at the time their beat selection, it was still it was different than the rest of the beats. That's the problem. that's been around. Beat selection, the beat <clears throat> selection all sounds the same. Culture two, culture three, input any song in between on a mixtape, it sounds like but the same that, shit. Like the baby got the same flow on everything. But what makes mm-hmm. him stand out is because on it's a different beat. So even if he's rapping his flow, if it's a super slow beat, it feels different. Mm-hmm. The Migos, it's the same type of beat with the same type of flow with the same but, type of hook. And it's just like, like I feel like I'm in this zone <clears throat> with them. Like, mm-hmm. like they rocking me to fucking sleep. But that's that's but yeah. what happened because the baby the baby had the same problem too because people were saying he was sound the same and it's because he was the key is that they the producers they're Hold they're rocking with back. the mm-hmm. you woke you woke face I knew it I knew it I mm. knew it <laughs> all right go ahead, go ahead go oh. ahead <laughs> but uh I think if they 
pretty much it, when you rock with the same producer for like the your majority of your career, right? Ma- majority of your music gonna sound the same, pretty much, mm-hmm. or whatever. And I say the difference between Migos, is Migos, they always have that same exact flow. But I know you brought up Cole, but you know Cole, he'll do a variation depending on what the beat does or whatever. But this, that, and the third. But 